Hello boys and girls and welcome to our next uh, lecture in evolution. Today we are going to be talking about shaping evolutionary theory. So our main objectives today is to discuss patterns observed in evolution, factors that influence speciation, and to compare gradualism with punctuated equilibrium. So Darwin's theory of natural selection explains how organisms adapt to their environment and this is natural selection in not only the mechanism of evolution, so. Population genetics, this is where we look at allele frequency. So, evolution will not occur in a population unless the allele frequency changes. So, different factors are natural selection, gene flow, mutations, non-random mating, and genetic drift. Drift is when we have a change in the allele frequencies in a population that is due to chance or random mating. So in small populations, this becomes more pronounced and the greater chance of losing an allele like the dominant or the recessive becomes greater. So some examples, one is the founder effect, which is when we have a small sample of a population moving and going into a different area separated from the rest of the population. Those alleles are those people are now the founders of that area and their alleles are now founder alleles. And alleles that were uncommon in the original population might now become common in the new one. Bottlenecking, this occurs when a population declines to a very low number and then rebounds. So here we have a cheetah range. If you look, so here's the cheetah range and we have no cheetahs here and here and then we have the range around 1900 so with this we can see high density medium density low density and a protected area for cheetahs now So gene flow, this increases genetic variation within a population and reduces differences between populations. So this is random mating and migration. And then we have non-random mating, which produce, promotes inbreeding and can lead to a change in allelic proportions favoring individuals that are homozygous for particular traits. And this is where we can get those dangerous homozygous recessives to start popping up again. Mutations can change allele frequencies. These can become harmful, lethal, or provide an advantage, and they provide raw material for natural selection. So the biggest thing here about mutations is, uh, can it increase fitness? So can it help it survive? And can it, uh, it help it mate? If it doesn't do either of them, that mutation is probably not going to pass on. So now we have natural selection. This is X to select individuals that are best adapted for survival and reproduction. So here, if you look, you see three different types of selection. So you have stabilizing selection, which is selection against both extremes. So the middle increases and the edges go in. Directional, this is when the the population moves to one side or another, and then disruptive. And this is when we get, uh, this is the one where we're gonna see the most speciation because it's selection against the mean. So it's gonna push down on that middle, creating two new groups. And those are gonna eventually, those eventually probably become two new species. Stabilizing selections operates to eliminate extreme expressions of a trait when the average leads to higher fitness. So if you remember our microevolution lab, this would be the heterozygous being the most fit. Directional makes an organism more fit. So this is the selection against one extreme. So the example here would be uh, when we had the highest fitness being the recessive. So the our population was directionally selected for the recessive. And disruptive is a process that splits a population into two groups. 
And so we generally from here can get new species because eventually these two groups are going to become so genetically diverse from each other that they may become two new species. Sexual selection, this is when the evolutionary fitness does not only depend on its ability to survive, but also its ability to reproduce. To reproduce, an individual must obtain a mate and produce viable offspring, keyword there, viable. Natural selection favors the traits that maximize an, the ability of an individual to compete for and attract mates, or the ability to produce offspring. Sexual selection is a type of selection in which force is determined by mate choice. So this can cause one genotype uh, to mate more frequently than another. For example, in warthogs, their tusks are part of sexual selection. The female will choose some that have larger tusks or because it, they, to them it's, it's a chance of having a better chance of having your offspring have large tusks, which means they can fight for better offspring in the future and pass on their genes. Now, speciation is the evolutionary process by which new biological species rise. This is a population must diverge and become reproductively isolated, and it is a long process. Types of speciation, this is allopatric. So we have a physical barrier, which is mountain ranges, channels, rivers, lava flow, and this divides one population into two or more populations. So for example, here we have the Grand Canyon, and the Grand Canyon has separated these two squirrels from each other to where they are now two different species of squirrel. Sympatric speciation, this is a species evolving into a new species without a physical barrier. So the ancestor species and the new species live side by side during the speciation process. So a great example of this are cichlids. So this can occur relatively in a short time when one species may give rise to many different species in response to the creation of a new habitat or some other ecological opportunity. So here we have different cichlids. Uh, this one's a fish eater. A fish eater, a zooplankton eater, a leaf eater, insect eater, algae scraper, and snail eater. And if you look at all of them, they all have different mouth morphologies. And this is just a type of divergent evolution and ad adaptive radiation. And then we have convergent evolution. And this is unrelated species evolving similar traits, even though they live in different parts of the world. So for example, placental mammals and marsupials. So we have a mole and a marsupial mole, an anteater and a numbat, uh, flying squirrel, sugar gliders, wolves and Tasmanian wolves. Now coevolution, this is the relationship between the two species might be so close that the evolution of one species may affect the evolution of another. So mutualism. Another example of this could even be uh, the coevolutionary arms race between animals. So for example, plants that have capsaicin to protect themselves and their fruits from animals and birds not being able to taste capsaicin.